Welcome my loves, it's Knowledge Butterfly. I'm back with another video. As always, sending you guys out peace, blessings, love, and abundance now. All right, we're gonna get into it as always. This video is about uh, how to utilize your star chart, which some people call astrological or natal chart, to find what your soul purpose is, like what the fuck you're supposed to be doing. Okay, um, we all know that um, if we incarnated here, most of us came here so that we can in, uh, um, obtain enlightenment, which enlightenment just means raising up your, um, your soul back to a seat. And the seat of the soul is in your crown chakra, your uh, pineal gland. So it's raising your soul back up to... Um, where it's supposed to be because it fell from grace and it fell to your root chakra which is the red chakra which is uh can be looked at in a negative instance as hell um but uh we won't get into all of that right now um but other than doing that yes that's the number one numeral uno most important thing um but this video is not about that portion it's actually about um the two houses you can utilize in your star chart to give you an indication or idea of what your soul is supposed to do when it comes to what people call work. Um, so what work you're supposed to be putting in or what work would make your soul happy, which would actually um, tie into you fulfilling your soul purpose as well, okay? Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and get into it, all right? Uh, the first thing I want to do is I don't want to assume that people... Uh, B just came and flew next to me, yay. But um, I don't want to assume that people, everybody who's watching the video is um, familiar with astrology. And when I talk about the star chart or the astrological wheel, um, how that wheel works. So uh, there are basically 12 houses. And uh, these 12 houses are governed by a zodiac sign and also the planet that rules that zodiac sign. So um, the wheel goes counterclockwise and the, it goes from Aries, which is the first house, and it ends with the 12th house, which is Pisces. Aries is ruled by um, Mars and Pisces is ruled by Neptune. All right. So that is basically the head Aries is the head and Pisces is the feet and um, the way that I look at an, a star chart is it is your soul's journey um, your soul's journey to oneness your soul's journey to uh, connecting that 360 degree circle um, together and making everything one and so make turning that 12 um, going from 12 to 13 basically so becoming the christ energy so yeah a bird just flew in here and it's like all kind of happenings happening right now and the sun is coming out um or shining on starting to shine on me and uh as above so below as within um or really i should say um as within so without you know so anywho so i'm gonna go ahead and get into it right now i was going to um do a breakdown of each one of the houses as far as give you the attributes of each house from 1 through 12 but because this video is specifically about the soul's journey I know that can make the video very lengthy and I don't really want to make it that lengthy I'll, I'll probably wind up doing eventually um, a video breaking out each one of the houses on a soul level but today I'm only going to break down two houses on a soul level and that's houses one and two. That's your first house and your 10th house. And um, when I say break it down on a soul level, when you start getting into astrology or even, even, even if you look at it like you pull your astrology for the day or you pull your natal chart, it's actually going to give you um, the attributes of the energy that you possess on a mundane level. So on a physical level, it's like the shell um, or the ego. However... Um, the soul astrology, which is called esoteric astrology, spelled E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C, which is basically astrology for the hidden self or your soul, that hidden light, um, that is going deeper into who you truly are. Because we all know that the ego is only, only exists on the physical plane. 
who you truly are, your soul is infinite and forever. So it will always be here. It is, you know, it is the true star. So, um, esoteric astrology helps you, um, find what your soul's purpose is. And so that's why I'm going to delve into that and not on the exoteric, which is the outside self. Okay. Or the, or the ego. Now, um, before I get into it, I am going to tell you the attributes of those two houses, the first and the 10th house. Um, and so the first house is, uh, again, governed by Aries and Mars, but it is, uh, the house of self, of appearances, of beginnings, the body, first impressions, attitude, identity, approach to life. All right. And then the 10th house, which is governed by Capricorn and Saturn is career, long-term goals, structure, status, reputation, public image, masculinity, men, fathers, experts, and fame. Now, the reason why these two houses, um, why I um, am doing a video on these two houses and how they connect is because first off, if you think about um, the fact that one house is one and the other house is 10, you actually realize that it's the same damn number because <laughs> one plus zero is one and so that actually means that both of these houses are um giving you off the 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 same meaning per se and what i mean by that is in the astrological chart you have six houses at the bottom you have six houses on top the houses on the bottom the below houses, I call those as below. The houses, of, houses above are as above. The houses, the six houses on the bottom are the hidden houses. Those are the inner self houses. Those are the houses that are connected to the feminine energy, um, which is passive energy, all right? Um, so that's internal going inside itself and the houses above are your masculine or active houses and that is the way you express um, the inner energy that is the way you express it and that is really connecting you to other people so the six houses below are dealing with yourself there are internal houses is dealing with um, your inner connection to yourself and knowing self where else you it, the six houses above are the way you express the inner self all right um so even though um there's another way to look at it there is no one way to look at anything when you come down to this plane you'll realize that everything is but half truth so my interpretation of astrology is my interpretation of astrology and i do know that the other ways that you look at it also have truths in them as well however for this particular video um, I want to show you how the one and the 10 work together in identifying your soul purpose. All right. Now, um, the first house, we talked about that being about self and about expression and impressions, how people see you and all those things like that. Um, it is, um, the first house is called the ascendant or the rising house. All right. And when you think about when somebody transitions and you go to a funeral and you look at the program, you know, for their, their obituary or whatever, and it'll have their birth date and it'll have their death date. And so um, it'll have above the birth date, sunrise, above the death date, sunset. So this is your sun rising, the ascendant in cancer, all right? Your, it is the sign that your ascendant was in, um, or it's this, uh, yes, it, <laughs> forgive me y'all, cause it's like things going on around me and, um, children that's are playing in the park or whatever. So I got a little distracted, but I'm going to, to bring it back to you guys now. But it's the sun that was rising over the Eastern horizon at the exact moment that you were born. When I say moment, I mean the day and the time. All right. So if you think about how the sun rises every single day and it rises in the east, it rises in the east is in a particular sign that that was that's um, the physical version of your true sun, your inner sun, your star. When you rose and you were born, there was a sign that was on the eastern horizon. That sign is your ascendant sign. So I'm going to go into 
my own chart and talk about how that that energy plays a part in who I am and how it helped me identify what I'm supposed to be doing here on this plane in order for me to um, express my energy in the way that I'm supposed to express it all right so um, like I said the first house is about self it is um, position Aries which is the initial spark of you coming into being um, you know the ram represents the head like if you look at um i forgot what it's called um uh, leonardo da vinci uh the i think it's called the vitruvian man it's the chart of the man with his arms stretched out and his legs stretched out and some of the charts have it broken down so you can see where each sign um what um where each sign what part of the body each sign rules Okay, and you'll see that the airy sign is at the head. And when you think about when a, you're, a woman gives birth and she pushes out a baby, the baby's supposed to come out head first. So that actually is it um, is in relation to um, your rising sun. All right. So even though Aries rules that, mine's is Cancer, um, and I'm gonna get into how. Cancer being my ascendant sign, how it, um, the type of energy that um, that comes with that particular sign, and also the type of energy that I'm supposed to put it, um, the type of energy that plays a part in who I am. Goodness, get it out. Ooh, okay, the type of energy that plays a part in who my soul truly is, which is my true self, who I truly am. All right. So first off, in exoteric astrology or the mundane physical astrology, astrology, the moon is the ruler of cancer. When we think of the moon, we know that the moon controls the waters, the tides, not only the tides of the, of the earth, so like the lakes, the rivers, the oceans, but also the water inside of your body. Um, so in, when, when you think of controlling tides, you think of it controlling emotions. So, that automatically tells you that cancer is going to be the most emotional sign because it is controlled by the moon. Now, in esoteric astrology, which is your soul astrology, it is actually ruled by the planet Neptune. And Neptune, when you uh, look at pictures or images of Neptune, you see that it looks like a planet of nothing but water. It's very blue. It's very vibrant. Um, and actually, when I look at the pictures or the images online of Neptune, it's very reminiscent of Jupiter. It looks like it has um, an eye and like it's a um, almost like it's a, a hurricane or some type of storm going on on the planet or whatever. So um, that tells you that it ties into intuition. The eye is how I see that. So, um, yeah. But now I'm going to get into some characteristics of cancer and some or some attributes of cancer. So cancer is a very nurturing and feeling sign, very emotional sign. Like I said, uh, on the ex, um, on the exoteric level, is tied to the moon, and the moon is about your emotions. It's the it's uh, the it's the mother. It's the cosmic womb. It's the universal mother. And so think about cancer in that way. It's the universal universal healer, the mother, the cosmic womb of all of the zodiac signs. Um, so that tells you then that a cancer ascendant, um, a cancer ascendant soul is feminine energy. And that doesn't matter if it's a female or a male, because remember that this duality is really just on this plane. But I'm speaking on how energy plays off. It's feminine energy. It's mother nurturing energy. So she or he, um, who is a Cancer Ascendant, is going to be a protector of the family. And when you think about a mother, a mother bear, she's protective of her cubs. She's protective of the of the ones that she loves. Um, however, when it comes to self, um, can you come off it? Um, you can come off very timid. So. I, speaking of my myself could come off very timid um very shy very introverted that crab energy going into your shell digging a hole in the dirt and going into that hole so not only going to the shell but then you dig a fucking hole in the dirt like you don't want to deal with anybody you kind of cut yourself off from people because you feel like you are separate from people you um you feel like people don't really get you and you know you're very emotional, but you don't really show emotion, so you go and you withdraw into self. 
okay? Um, so um, that has to do with the fact that a Cancer Ascendant can be very insecure, very, very insecure about self and be the worst judge of themselves and feel like nobody likes you, feels like nobody understands you, nobody gets you. Um, this placement um, can also cause for um, a person to mistake other people's feelings and emotions as, as your own, been there. Um, and this is because a cancer fills everything in their environment, um, which makes us very sensitive empaths because we can feel everything. We can tell when somebody is not necessarily feeling us. We can also tell when somebody is angry or whatever it may be. So since we feel those emotions from time to time, if you're not conscious of it and you haven't worked on it, you'll, you'll mistake that for being your own emotions and then that makes you even more emotional or, you know, even more on 10. And so, uh, that is uh, that is one of the things that a cancer ascendant has to actually gain control of and gain understanding of it and be able to not um, mix you know not take on someone else's energy and um, that's very vital very very vital for your emotional health let me just say that and your mental health <laughs> Speaking from experience, so yeah, we're very, very sensitive to empaths, which actually makes us um, great counselors because we can actually understand where people are coming from. We can actually um, relate to people because we can feel their emotions. We can truly feel you when you say you feel me. We can truly feel you. You know. Um, it also makes us great healers because if you're able to feel. Um, someone's sickness you're able to feel some you know what emotion somebody is actually currently displaying you can help them heal in that way because if I can tell you're feeling depressed then I can I can I would know the remedy or the solution not just dealing with the problem but the, what can help you with the solution for that so you you basically know whatever kind of herb somebody might need and that comes into studying um, nature and medicinal things of that nature but you know as being a natural nurturer you actually do care about that person what they're going through at the same time so that's why you're a great healer because the per person can sense that you actually do care about what's going on with them so I just talked about how being a cancer ascended how that ties into you basically can be in a medical field and a natural nurturer because you're a care a natural caregiver there are people who are in the medical field now who don't give a damn about people they don't have any type of, of um, sense of empathy or anything like that that's because they're in the wrong profession because that doesn't tie in with their energy you see what I'm saying so we have a lot of people that are misplaced and doing things they shouldn't be doing now that's not to say that you have to go into a regular medical field or do anything of, of that nature because I, re I remember I used to want to be a nurse when I was younger and um, I'm glad I didn't because I can't see myself wanting to push pills or anything that's not holistic into a person because I'm all about helping people heal their soul, not just their body. Because if you if you heal the mental and the soul, if you heal the mind and the soul, you heal the body. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, also, like I said, you could be some a person who as a counselor, a teacher of that nature, where you're actually giving people information in order for them to heal their self. That's part of the reason I, um, why I was called to do a YouTube channel because um, I am that person that normally people come to on a one-on-one -on -one basis and they'll ask for advice or they'll tell me what's going on with them and I'm able to give them advice. They'll be like, oh yeah, you're right, and you're right. And it's not even about me hearing you're right, but that's why I actually did the channel because I don't have to hear people say you're right you know they just listen to the information that I give them and they're able to heal thyself my nephew actually sent me this post that said healthy self and when you broke down the word healthy it was heal thyself and I thought that was really awesome and it actually fits my energy with this cancer ascendant so it's really cool um, 
because just like a mother is not in it for the accolades m m women normally don't become a mother because they want somebody to tell them that they're doing something right a really a real mother and a good mother does it for the love of their child and because they want to guide them in a direction that, that that they can be a better person or you know be able to express themselves and be happy in whatever they do and so that ties into that cancer energy and that natural nurturer um, and being a protector of family and a lover of family and um, on a higher note you go from being a protector and feeling like you have to protect them from everything to guiding them so that they can learn how to make their own way you know what I'm saying um, oh got a little windy now um, cancers uh, Ascendants have a very active imagination. Actually, Cancers as a whole have a very active imagination. Um, very creative types. Normally are attuned to things that you can be creative in, like cooking. I love to cook, and it makes a whole lot of sense because I always say that I put a love, I put love in my food. That's a love vibration, and that goes into that mother. Because when you think about who cooks food, you went to my, your mama's house or your grandma's house, and you'd be like, oh, they cook a certain meal or whatever, and it was your favorite, and you still to this day can taste it on your palate. That was my mama. My mom could cook and bake anything, you know? And so it makes sense, actually, to, as to why I chose to, um, uh, to um, come into this plane. I chose her as my mother because the energy and the attributes that she had matched my soul. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that that's another thing you can actually utilize your 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 mother to kind of get an idea of what of what um, your soul purpose is because whatever your mother was just innately good at, naturally good at, she didn't have no kind of quote unquote training to do. Um, you chose that person because they had that that attribute and it is because it matched something that you needed to bring out I even think about when it comes to the cooking when I went to Jamaica The man that I started dating owned his own restaurant and cooked vegan food They call it ITIL in, in Jamaica, but he cooked vegan food and I was like, you know what? Show me how to do this. Show me how to cook Jamaican food. So, you know, I was side by side learning how to cook with him. And he's not the most nurturing, patient person by any means. He's a Taurus, sun sign, and it's that bull energy. Um, very reminiscent of my father. Like, they don't have that empathy and that caring, nurturing mother thing going on. So his energy related more with my father, but his cooking, his soul, related more with my mother's energy. So you just start seeing how all of that makes sense and how it actually makes sense as to why food is in part of what my sole purpose is is in food so um yeah that's mm, I smell weed somebody's smoking it smells so good <sighs> anywho um the what else did I want to talk about where did I stop um yeah so I talked about we're very creative, very very um, active imagination. So you can put that imagination into play. I put it to play in food, um, but also I, I I can put it to play in anything. Because when I was growing up, I actually used to draw a lot. I loved art. I still love art. I love being around creative people. I love being around people who are musically inclined. When I was younger, I also sang a lot. So. Um, very creative people and the singing actually makes a whole lot of sense as well why I love music so much because music is um, is a soul expression and music is universal but it's definitely a soul expression and so all of the music that I choose is more on the loving side and it's dealing with um, I, it could be dealing with heartbreak or whatever like Lauren Hill's X Factor or something like that I love that whole album um, Daniel Caesar his album so a lot of things like that you choose music wise um, talks about what's going on with your soul too that's a whole nother whole nother video actually I'm not gonna get into that but music does speak to what you, is, is, a, is a language for your soul um, 
but yeah cancer ascendant is definitely the perfect place to develop your emotional body from a lower vibration to a higher vibration so once you start to develop it to a higher vibration you start to get more clarity in what your soul purpose is if you are a cancer ascendant all right um i honestly feel like it could work with any um with any sign the your soul purpose and your soul energy is in that first house all right so when you start to deal with the quote-unquote negative aspects of your sign in, in a, your ascendant sign you're able to transmute it and to raise it to a higher vibration that's the alchemy in what we're doing here on this plane and so when when you start to develop that more that skill more and um, start being honest with yourself the things that you are naturally attracted to you you are reminded of that and so you actually start to naturally just do those things like how I naturally magnetically attracted a man that can cook some food and cooks food that is some of the most delicious food I ever tasted um, even before I got with him I was um, seeing a guy who loves to cook and he also draws he's a graphic designer so that ties into my artistic side and how I used to draw when I, I was younger how I love to cook now to this day and me and him will create meals together we would make pizzas and all kind of dishes like we made our shit from scratch so it was real cooking so it actually just shows how the you'll start to magnetically attract people who are who are attracted to your soul's energy the things that your soul likes to do that fulfills your soul and like I said cooking food is one of those things that fulfills my soul so I was attracting those men which was giving me an indication of some of the things that I was supposed to be doing all right um now, like I said, Neptune is actually the esoteric um, ruler of the, of Cancer. Neptune is the most mystical and intuitive planet. So that means that my intuition is very heightened. Um, the moon is the esoteric, and that also <clears throat> ties into intuition because that is a feminine trait, as a feminine energy. So I'm very, very intuitive, which means that, again, that ties into me being able to connect to other people's energy and being able to help other people in the sense that I am able to use my natural nurturing qualities and my natural empathy to um, give people a resolution. That's why I normally attract people who just be going through a whole lot of shit, honey, a whole lot of shit. And when they meet me, they normally start making some positive changes. I met this guy in Jamaica who um, just really wasn't feeling people. He felt like a loner. He was home houseless at the time. And um, he would come to the, we would go to the, to the Errol Flynn Marina and sit there and just talk and converse. And I saw his growth. I saw him go from being this person who just really felt like he didn't want to be here because he literally told me he didn't want to physically be here no more to him um getting back into crystals and being able to talk to other people I, he was talking to people and making friends and just like i just saw his growth i also happened with another another guy here in atlanta he had actually tried to commit suicide and I met him and I taught him how to meditate and the, again that natural nurturing that meditation and that healing that comes from it so all of these experiences that I attracted was giving me an idea as to as well as to what I'm supposed to be doing but using my first and my tenth house I can actually see why I attracted those situations and that that truly is what I um, was meant to do all right um, now I'm gonna get into the tenth house so the 10th house is called your Midheaven house. It's also called MC and not Master Ceremonies, but um, Medium Co Coeli or Coeli. And that really mean, uh, literally means middle of the sky. So that is the highest point or the most northern point of your chart. And it is, um, it is the point of like I said, your career, your status, your aim in life, your aspirations, your public reputation, and your life goal. Um, on a soul level, it 
connects to your first house because it is the active way on which your soul expresses the energy in that first house. So whatever the energy that is in that first house it is the way that you would express it in the 10th house. That is the, the, the masculine way that you would express it. All right. Um, so think of it like your soul, your mission, like what you're supposed to do is, is literally is really the occupation that will make your soul happy. All right. Cause it falls in line with the energy and the attributes that are in your first house. So, um, for me, I have Pisces in my 10th house or mid heaven house and Pisces is the perfect placement for spirit, anything in a spiritual career. So when you start doing research on esoteric, let's say you, um, you do research on the esoteric meaning of whatever your sign is in the 10th house or in the midheaven, it'll start to tell you or give you some information on that. For me, um, it was saying teaching and healing, again, tying into the things that I was already doing in Jamaica, I was already teaching. I was teaching this that, that young guy who um, was going through some things about, you know, the universe himself and then also helping him heal by teaching him these things. I'm doing a YouTube channel teaching people about, you know, astrology, your chakras, um, healing old wounds, different crystals and things that I utilize, different ways that I meditate for healing purposes. That is a mother. That's a natural nurturer. And I'm teaching people about the holistic way to do it and not the physical mundane way to do it, which also ties into my sun sign, Sagittarius. I was born on November the 26th. November the 26th is also Dr. Sebi, uh, Sebi's birthday. And Dr. Sebi, what did he do? He actually was known for coming up with an alkaline diet and the way that people could eat and things. So he it dealt with food and holistic healing. And what is my love and passion? Food and holistic healing. So you just start to see how your natal chart or your star chart paints the perfect picture of the energy that is within you and that you possess. And then you know what avenues you can actually put that energy into that'll make you happy. And when you are happy, honey, you will eventually make money from that. You will actually be very physically wealthy from that. All right. Um, so for me having Pisces, a, a career that is solely based on making money would never make me happy. And that makes a whole lot of sense because when I was in banking, I was so unhappy. I was so unhappy. I remember right before I, I quit that job saying, this is not helping nobody. I'm not helping anybody. I can't do something where I'm not helping people, where I'm not, you know, being some type of healing to, to others and so here I am doing a YouTube channel you know sharing um, sharing information on on um, my journey my spiritual journey and not just my spiritual journey sharing things that you know help you guys as well elevate and reach your higher self you know so and that makes me happy that really makes me happy that you know I'm, I'm able to express my souls my soul purpose um through youtube and of course when i cook for people and i cook for myself <sighs> y'all just don't know how happy that makes me but anywho i'm gonna keep going because this video is getting longer than i wanted it to be but um so yeah and that that's because neptune is a very intuitive planet and it is also a planet of enlightenment when you think about ne um, neptune being the ruler of pisces um, as well, you know that that has to do with your subconscious mind because Neptune rules or governs the 12th house. And um, the 12th house is also about rebirth and regeneration. Um, yeah, it's also about rebirth and regeneration because it's literally about you transforming, you leaving this vehicle and you're going to transform into another vehicle or into another, um, yeah, into another vehicle. Um, also, Neptune is, um, an energy that gives to, gives to, like I said, healing work. So medical professions and any type of healing would be perfect for Neptune. Um, 
and uh, gosh, I lost my train of thought, y'all. Hold on one second, because I was looking at something else to make sure I got into. Oh, also, music and fine arts are also um, Neptune. So that is getting into creativity, and like I said, Cancer being. Um, also part of my creativity as well it just goes to show how Neptune does play a, a, a huge part so that was that was Neptune on the level for it being part of my cancer energy because it is the esoteric ruler of cancer but also um, Pisces being in my midheaven house that I'm connected to Neptune in that way as well but on a higher um, esoteric level Pluto is what is the ruler of Pisces. So Pluto is also about rebirth, regeneration. It's about ending of things and new beginnings as well. So you see the tie into with Neptune. It's, but it's also the end of attachments to the physical world and the beginning of a higher spiritual enlightenment. And so that ties into me being more of a spiritual worker versus a physical mundane worker and doing a, a, a nine to five job and doing that bullshit why that never worked out for me why every time I would be doing a job I would always get to the point where it was like I would literally have a breakdown and be like I can't do this no more and I would quit I would quit on a whim honey I'd be like I can't get I don't know about no two weeks notice I don't know about none of this I just need to be out and so that goes to see uh, that goes to people looking at me like I just kind of like aimlessly just wonder about this earth and just in the clouds and all of that like it ties into all that energy so it gives me a better understanding of, of myself and, and as to why I quit jobs so easily if I'm not feeling it because I am a feeler I am a feeler I am a um, a feeler I'm a healer you know what I'm saying I'm a teacher I'm a counselor um, and so anything that has to do with healing in any type of way whether it be a Reiki healer whether it be a counselor whether it be a teacher whether it be a chef that cooks holistic food whether it be you know any of those things works for me that's the type of energy that is that is in my soul that is my soul incarnate energy so I say all that to say that and do the breakdown of myself to just to give you guys an understanding of how the first and the 10th house work together. So the first house, I got an idea of the energy that I possess, the, the, the energy for healing and nurturing and all those things like that. And then the 10th house, I got, um, I got, um, the energy that, or the types of, of jobs or occupations that will work for that type of energy that I possess, if that makes any sense. Um, geez, I'm over here looking at the clock because it's saying 444, so that, that actually made me excited. And I'm starting to get a little hungry too, so I think I'm about to go on ahead to the house and eat, even though I would prefer to stay out here because it's just, it's really peaceful. And when you're in the house, you feel like, you feel closed, you feel closed. You feel claustrophobic, y'all. You feel closed in, and I don't like feeling closed in, so. Um, I definitely had to come out and do this video and you know express that to you guys uh, as to how the first and the tenth house work so again the first house your ascended house is all about yourself it's all about the energy and the attributes um, that you um, incarnated in this lifetime in it's about um, your impression the impression you leave on other people how they see you and the 10th house is about your career goals um, aspirations and things of that nature and when you know yourself know the soul in the first house in the 10th house then you you would know what works for you so my sign being Pisces Pisces is a very spiritual sign it's um, if you think about it now just the time of you know the age of Pisces we had Christianity at its all-time high people really wanted something to believe in outside of self but the higher self of Pisces is about really um, teaching people how um, teaching people how to heal thyself and also teaching people um, a higher level of understanding of self and of really the world as a whole so 
I'm gonna end on that note guys I really appreciate you guys for watching so much I really appreciate the love I really really and truly do I appreciate any all the new subscribers who have subscribed to my channel I appreciate you guys for that um, go ahead and check out my Instagram page knowledge butterfly and go ahead and you know follow me on there um, it's not a private page so you can you can follow me on there and go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this and more content like this and also so you can get notifications when I you know do a video so I'm gonna end the video on that note guys I really appreciate you as well again sending you love out to the ether peace